Hey everybody, my name is Professor Emily Cochran and welcome to uh, History and Literature of the New Testament for uh, the nursing program here at Concordia Irvine. Um, like I said, my name is Professor Cochran or I usually send my emails PC, it, whichever, it's it's fine. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I am originally from Michigan. I have a bachelor's degree from a school called Hillsdale College. Sorry, my baby's making some noise there. Um, uh, which is a little teeny college in Michigan. I also have a degree in theology from uh, from Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana, um, which is also a um, a part of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod of which Concordia University Irvine is a member. Um, I am married to an LCMS pastor, Lutheran Church Missouri Synod pastor. Um, and we currently have a gaggle of hilarious children, one of whom is kind of cooing over there. I won't, uh, I won't, I won't, uh, I won't show them now. Um, just a little bit about this course. Um, this is an intensive course and the nature of the course is, well, in that word, intensive, intense. It will take up a lot of your time. Um, let's just lay down some of the expectations here. Uh, do read the syllabus, the course overview, um, and the writing expectations documents that I provided for you. Um, do take note especially of those writing expectations and take note of the very um, specific stipulations there in that document. Um, the Just by way of clarification, uh, the first and second person, let me just move my camera here for a second, uh, the first and second person rule um, that is writing in first and second person applies to the theology essays only and not the vocational reflections. So if you have any questions on that, be sure to let me know, but I just want to clarify that um, here in this introductory video. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, do take a look at the writing expectations guide and you'll get a little bit of a better picture. Let's see, uh, moving right along now. Um, this course is taught from the worldview of Concordia University, which is a member of, like I said, the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. Um, you're not graded, of course, on your adherence to a certain worldview or anything like that. All students come from all sorts of different backgrounds and religious uh, religious beliefs and that sort of thing. Um, but you do need to at least engage the material and engage the topics for discussion to a degree that shows me that you're considering and digesting the matter instead of, well, I just don't believe this and this is stupid. Um, never really had that problem, but I always feel the need to say that. Um, by way of expectations for your requirements for every week. Um, you Each week is mostly the same with a couple of exceptions. Um, you have the same, or you have readings from both Ludwig and Middendorf. Um, you have your e-lectures from Dr. Brighton, um, who's the supervising professor for the course, as well as a professor of New Testament here at Concordia. Oh goodness, I'm sorry, he's so, hello. He's uh, very, very chatty this morning. Um, you have your uh, discussion board post requirements. You for you have to start a thread by midnight on Wednesday, and then you have to have a response to another thread by Friday. Um, you have your theology essay weekly, and you have your vocational uh, essay weekly. You have your content quiz, and you also have your uh, reading completion quiz. It's formatted in this in the format of a quiz, but it isn't. Um, but it is just telling me how much of the reading you completed. Um, and this is an honor system approach as well. The last week of class is where there are a couple of exceptions to this to the course being the same. Um, you, the last week of class, you will have a final exam essay. Oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, one moment here, please. Oh, goodness. <sighs> okay, so for the last week of cor the course, you do have your final exam. You do have your final exam essays. Your final exam essays are four additional essays. Um, on top of the ones you already have weekly, on top of your theology essay and your vocational reflection, you do have those final exam essays. Um, I cannot give them to you in advance. There has to be some degree of spontaneity um, that is reminiscent of an actual sit down final exam, even though it, they are essays, but they will be comprehensive in nature. So they are going to cover the themes that you're, go you're going to see overarching throughout the entirety of the course. Um, it's unpopular, understandably, but this is, like I said, an intensive course, and I have every confidence that you guys will be able to uh, rise up to the challenge. Um, so those are your weekly requirements. Do take uh, do take note of the course expectations and overview document just to, uh, if you need some help remembering what those requirements are, those are available for you. Um, just as a closing note, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, excuse me. Um, just as a closing note, before we begin the course, some students, and it's very popular amongst um, even Christians to do this, but many people view Jesus as 
a nice sort of friendly guy who we see in children's books. He's always very kind. He's always very loving. Um, he, he, you know, didn't make people angry. We should be more like Jesus and be very kind. Well, I challenge you to consider this. Jesus, despite or if he were, if, let me rephrase, if he were all of those things, never upsetting people, never calling people out uh, for their sins, never telling it like it is, so to speak, um, why on earth was he executed in one of the most gruesome ways known to man at that point, in that part of the ancient world? Jesus didn't just say things people liked. Jesus uh, didn't just say things to make people happy and feel good. We sort of juxtapo juxtapose our worldview, our 21st century worldview on Jesus, saying that he welcomed all things and all worldviews, um, all lifestyles, all opinions. But I challenge you to, in this course, to consider Jesus not simply just a sort of... Uh, mm, really, really uh, the sort of peachy kind of guy that we've come to make him. But as scripture says, he is God incarnate. He, that is in the flesh. He's become incarnate to save humanity from its sins, which are real and do exist and do not simply, we cannot simply write away as, or that is right off as us being judgmental, calling someone out on a particular sin or warning them perhaps of a particular sin. Because well, if Jesus never did that, then why on earth was he executed? This is simply me challenging you to think a little bit deeper beyond some of the more superficial versions of Jesus we've come to see, uh, especially in the 21st century, but throughout history as we've become more and more modern in our approach to religion. Um, but think about how those things fit into the entire narrative of this course as we go through the materials. Um, Feel free to approach me with any questions or concerns you might have about the text itself, about anything that you find confusing about the course itself, or about any theological questions you might have. Um, I look forward to getting to know each and every one of you through, uh, through your writing in the discussion board posts or even through email correspondence, and uh, let's have a great term.